Lately, many of you have been asking me about machining materials other than metal on the PM30. So today we're going to make some little brackets out of teak, a hardwood known for its weather resistance, which is great because it's going to go behind this doorbell. Before I tried it, I didn't think the machine was going to do a great job with woods, mainly because of the slower spindle speed. CNC routers designed for cutting wood have a spindle speed upwards of like 20 or even 30,000 RPM, and the PM30 maxes out at 3,000. So how good could it really be? Well, if you're planning on getting a mill, but also want to machine some wood, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. In fact, that's now one of my favorite materials to machine because of how forgiving and easy it is. You're also going to be able to make parts way faster because of how hard you can push the feeds and speeds. By all measures, a benchtop mill like the PM30 isn't a terribly rigid or powerful mill for machining metals. But that's not true for machining wood. In fact, I've not yet found the limit and I push the machine harder every time I'm cutting wood. This is the Unified G4 Doorbell Pro PoE. It's a popular power over ethernet camera loaded with all kinds of bells and whistles, but Unify fell a little short when it comes to the physical mounting of the device. I need to put it in a corner, so I'd really like to use the wedge mount, but the PoE version of this camera has this protrusion on the back of it, which sticks out past the mounting face of the wedge. So instead of chipping away at the brick to make room for the stick out, we're going to make this little spacer out of weather resistant teak hardwood and paint it black for good measure. And if you're watching this because you've got a G4 Doorbell Pro PoE and you're having the same issue, I've got a few extras here, so go ahead and send me an email and I can get one headed your way if you're interested. Taking a look in SolidWorks here, we can see this is a very roughly modeled up wedge mount. I measured and modeled the important stuff, so the perimeter of the thing, the location of the holes, and this big clearance slot are all pretty accurate. The rest of the bracket is a little bit different in reality, but that doesn't matter. So based on this, we modeled this quick and dirty uh, little spacer plate here and I got slots instead of holes because when we're machining we're going to be machining straight up and down we can't machine on an angle like this so I just made slots so that you know that slot is just going to line up with um, with those clearance holes and the same is true if you sort of flip this bracket around that's why we got a slot on this side too so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the cam and the feeds and speeds that's the fun stuff let's hide that here let's go over to our oh there you go. Let's go over to this. So this is HSM Works. This is a plug-in for SolidWorks made by Autodesk, and it's identical to Fusion Cam under the hood. So um, if you're used to Fusion Cam, all the, the the tabs and the feeds and speeds will be the same. Let's just do a quick stock simulation, show you guys what we're hoping to end up with. Oop, we got it upside down here. <clears throat> so we're coming in with a half inch three flute aluminum end mill cutter. This is a cutter designed for aluminum, not for wood, and it works just great. So we deck off the top, and then I come in here and just clean off a 20,000 skin because I'm trying to leave a nice surface finish and I wasn't sure if it was gonna sort of gouge the part when we were taking a lot of material. Then we're cleaning up the perimeters, and here we're coming in with a um, 3 16 four flute end mill, and then a chamfer tool. So that's it for this operation. And then all we really do is we flip it over and we remove this sort of top hat from the other side all with one tool. So there's only three different tools for this whole job and it all goes really quickly. So, and here's what I want to show you if you're interested in machining wood with one of these mills. Let's take a look at, uh, so first we have a quarter inch step over and a half inch cutter, so half the width. And then let's go ahead and take a look at these feeds and speeds. So we're running at 3000 RPM and taking 8,000 feed per tooth, which is resulting in 72 inches per minute. And you'll be able to see that on the centroid on the CNC control screen that we are in fact moving at 72 inches per minute and this number for me is like I never ever ever go this fast with this machine when I'm machining metals ever um, it's closer to it really depends what you're doing but like let's say closer to 20 or something so this is really cool and fun to see and we're doing it with a half inch cutter and taking quarter inch step overs no less so it's pretty darn impressive if you're used to watching your little bench mill chug along machining metal so that's really cool let's go over to the mill and take a look at what that looks like so here we are coming in with that first 2d adaptive clearing operation this is that half inch three flute aluminum end mill uh, spinning at 3000 rpm 8000 feet per tooth and moving at 72 inches per minute and this depth is um, I think a little bit less than half an inch what you're seeing here but the next pass is quite a bit deeper and we've got all the same feeds and speeds so here we go this is like three quarters of an inch a quarter inch step over 3000 rpm 8000 feet per tooth and again we're moving at 72 inches per minute and like it's not struggling at all the surface finishes are amazing it sounds great 
Uh, and it's, it's just awesome to watch because I never see material get removed this quickly on the little PM30. So uh, even with metals, you know, the parts that the PM30 makes are really nice. Okay, so this is a six degree ramp down. I never do that in metals. It's always one or two degrees depending on the tool. Um, and all these feeds and speeds are the same. Again, this is going down like three quarters of an inch or something like that. So, um, you know, the PM30 is also great for metals. It's just a lot, lot slower. So um, you can make really accurate parts, really nice parts. And if you're making parts out of steel that don't require a lot of material remover, that's where this removal, that's where this uh, mill really shines. Like um, if you're like knives are a great example because you're really only like removing material from the bevel. You're kind of tracing around an outline, but you're not removing like a lot of bulk material. Uh, with aluminum, that problem is relieved a little bit. Like you can make some parts where you're really kind of hogging away material. They'll take longer, but they'll come out fine. The machine will do great. And here we are coming in with that 3 16 inch end mill. And I went way, way, way too slow. Um, this is not sped up. This is at 100% speed. I think this is the 2000s feed per tooth or something. I was a little bit worried because it's a smaller tool. Again, this always happens to me. <laughs> when I'm machining wood because I'll push it a little bit harder, but I think, oh, you know, like I'll push it a little bit harder than I do in metals, but I think, oh, you know, it's a small tool, be careful. And it's just like, you know, you watch it for two seconds and you think right away, you think, yeah, I should have doubled that or something. So um, either way, you see there's little burrs that uh, the cutters do leave, but the chamfer tool cleans those up real nice. And um, the corners look really, really good in wood and you can go quite a bit faster. This is I think 4,000 speed per tooth. I like to go a little bit slower on the finishing passes. So chamfers, 2D contours and things, I'll always go a little bit slower. Just err on the side of caution to get a nice surface finish. And here we go. We're breaking that outside edge. And all those burrs just fall right off. So they don't look good right away, but as soon as you hit them with a chamfer tool, they just they come right off real nice. And here's what we're looking like after the first operation. So all the tool pass that we ran sort of from this side. Then the next thing we're going to do is just sort of flip it over and machine the other side. And so here we are. This footage is sped up. This is at like 400%. Um, but same feeds and speeds, 3000 RPM, 8000 feet per two, 72 inches per minute. And uh, we're coming in sort of from the outside in up until a point. You'll see this is, I do this in a funny way, and I'm not sure if it's right, but it's the best. It, it works of all the ways that I've found to face uh, a side that already has internal cutouts in it. Like when I do just the straight facing operation, or if I were to let that tool path continue and collapse all the way in, uh, it sort of chips the corners as it comes to like the hollow points. It pushes over and chips the corner. And so I found that ramping from the inside out uh, like this, prevents that but uh, maybe there's a better way I'm not sure that also doesn't really matter because this is the backside so I hope that sort of helps answer some of the questions about the PM30 machining other materials wood machines hardwood specifically machine really really nicely softer woods like pine and cedar don't machine so nice they're a little stringier chippier when you get the corners and things like that but hardwood hardwoods and like the denser the wood the better and there's still no limit on the feeds and speeds. And plastics are a lot the same. Like a lot of the feeds and speeds I use in wood, I use in plastics. Again, with plastics, I haven't found the limit. I've machined a lot of HDPE and like it just, the, the PM30 just sails through that stuff. You, and it's even, it's a lot quieter than wood and cleaner because it doesn't get sawdusty or anything. Plastics probably machine the best with the best surface finishes, um, but wood machines just as fast and it's really easy. I found to clean up after, like if you see some witness marks of any tooling or anything like that, rub it with some sandpaper and it always comes out really nice. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video.